Are you tired of feeling tethered to medication for relief from headache pain? Worried when you reach for it, the bottle will be empty when you need it most? My name is Dr. Nick from Preferred Physical Therapy, where we specialize in helping people 40 plus stay active and independent, live free from painkillers, and avoid surgery. Today, I'm going to talk about the four types of headache pain and which are most common and give you techniques to use on your own to get relief quick. The first type is called a tension headache, and these are the most common. These are characterized by a dull, non-throbbing pain in the head. Sometimes we get folks who will come in and say it feels like they have a rubber band on top of their head. There's a lot of pressure and tension on their head. The other type are migraines. And migraines can have a wide variety of presentation, but mostly we get folks who will get sensitivity to light, sensitivity to sound or loud noises, Nausea, even vomiting, can be symptoms of migraine type pain and, and can often last for hours to days. The third type is called cervicogenic headaches. Cervicogenic meaning of cervical origin, cervical meaning neck pain. So these headaches are brought on by some kind of condition in the neck. And most commonly, it's some combination of irritation at the joints of the vertebral level. So every vertebrae has a joint. Additionally, it can be from any kind of spasm or tension associated with the muscles that support the neck and back of the head. Often, these are folks who will come in and say they have this pain that exists typically on one side more than another, but it certainly can be on both sides. And it will be described as a ram's horn presentation, meaning it comes up often from behind the ear and wraps around even up to the eye. Sometimes folks will complain about pain behind their eye, ache behind the eye, but commonly up and around the ear and side of the head. Again, it can be on one side or it can be on both sides at the same time. The fourth type are called cluster headaches. Cluster headaches are similar to migraine in that they can be from a wide variety of origins. It can be from diet, it can be from medications, it can be from some genetic predisposition, whether that's tension, spinal abnormality, there could be a lot of reasons why you might experience cluster headaches. Symptoms of cluster headaches include any kind of pain up and around the base of the neck and skull area, top of the head and kind of coming up and around towards the top eyebrow line and can be associated with any kind of withdrawal type situation, whether that's caffeine, uh, sleep, medication. They additionally can be because of nasal congestion associated with teary eyes, pressure in the nasal cavities, which can be brought on by seasonal allergies or coming off of a sinus infection. Of those four types of headache, the two most common are cervicogenic and tension. Again, cervicogenic is that ram's horn presentation. Tension headache is that band, tight band feeling around the top of the head. The good news is these types of headaches are very easy to treat on your own without having to reach for that medication bottle. The treatment for both of these is very similar. So don't be overly concerned with which one you have. These treatments will work really well for both of these types of headache. The first thing I want you to do is a self-massage along the base or back of your skull. If you think about the back of your head where it rounds, right underneath where that base of the skull is, is a bunch of muscles called the suboccipitals. Sub meaning below, occipital meaning head. So these suboccipitals are a bunch of fine little small muscles that help with the fine movements of our head on our neck and often can become very spastic or high tension because of the way that we either sleep, our posture, or stress. So work stress, home stress, any kind of external stressor can contribute to a lot more tension or pain up here, particularly for folks who work at a computer, who drive often, or find themselves looking down for long periods of time. All of this can become more and more tense because of those sustained postures. And so what I want you to do is with your two index and middle finger, begin to wrap from back of the skull where it's bony, and then come down and around and wrap all the way along behind the ear. You're gonna feel kind of a knobby bone right behind the ear. That's called your mastoid process. That's a site of another muscle attachment, which is this long, thick banded muscle called the sternocleidomastoid. We're gonna call it the SCM for short. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna work two fingers back of the skull where it's bony, light to moderate pressure. This should not be painful. This is not one of those where some feels good, more has to be better, and we get really heavy handed in that. Keep it light, keep it soothing. Drag your hands along the back of the skull. And I begin to look down just a little bit. Come down and wrap underneath and then come right to below the jawline. I want you to stop right there. Don't go any lower and I'll tell you why. 
We want to be able to massage and lighten up these, this tension across the back of the skull. And then from here, we're going to switch our grip and then we're going to go into a pinch grip and work down. I often will just do one more than the other because the SCM muscle runs right along our carotid artery. And the carotid artery is one thing that we don't want to press into, but instead we want to be able to pinch the muscle and pull away. If we massage into that carotid artery, that can actually reduce our heart rate and maybe even cause us to pass out. So that's why we're going to switch our grip and not press into the SCM muscle, but instead we're going to work on a pinching technique just to lightly grab and pull away. Again, we're starting at the base of our skull where it's bony and then begin to drag down. As we drag down, think about going wide across the back of the skull and then just behind the ears. So you're going to feel these knobby bones. If you're up higher here, you feel knobs. That's part of the the first cervical vertebrae, you come back down and then right underneath there is just below and behind the, the jaw angle is where you'll feel that mastoid process. That's where I want you to stop. If you have headache pain on one side more than the other, it's okay to bias just that side. Doing this laying down is best, but doing it standing or seated is also fine. To massage this SCM, sternocleidomastoid muscle, Laying down is best. Doing it seated or standing is also okay. Find just below and behind the jaw angle. You're going to be able to wrap down and usually in the middle of that muscle belly is where you'll see, feel some of that tension. And you'll know you're on a good spot is if as you find it and then you pinch on it, you might feel a sensation that will go up or even come up and reproduce some of that headache pain. That's where you know you're in the right spot. Linger there a little bit longer, but not so much where it starts to trigger more pain. Keep it light, keep it soothing. It's very easy to overdo, get heavy handed, and then trigger a headache. So keep it light, keep it smooth. You wanna make sure that you stay cautious around the, the SCM muscle, because in this space, as I mentioned before, there's the carotid artery. If we rub on it or press on it this way, it can cause us to pass out. But also is, what's nearby here is called the brachial plexus. The brachial plexus is a collection of nerves that come from the neck that then feed the arm. And so if you find you're in a soft spot deep in here, you might get some zinging sensation down the arm. You're also in the wrong spot there. So come off there a little bit higher and you're going to find this ridge. Easy to, if you turn away from the side that is painful, you'll be able to get on that sternocleidomastoid on that side and then come back and feel like you're still you're still on that muscle. And it is gonna feel kind of ropey, kind of stringy. That's, that's normal, that's how you know you're on the right spot. You might have some spots where it's more intense discomfort or more intense pain. So ease up on those spots, but those are the spots that I want you to linger on a little bit, apply a little bit of pressure where it's comfortably uncomfortable. And I know it sounds tough to navigate, but just think simple, like I can do this for for longer periods of time versus shorter periods of time and without increasing headache pain. You can do this for five to 10 minutes, working slowly, gently between 30 and 40 strokes along the back of the neck and then down the SEM, just keeping it very easy. If you're gonna do a pinch and hold technique, which I like to do in the SEM muscle, then a three to five second hold, which I incorporate into a breath. So an inhale, exhale, about three seconds. Do two breath cycles, five seconds. And so I'll hold that for three to five seconds or one to two breath cycles, and then move to another spot. I'll often come back to that same spot, but no more than five to 10 times. Again, we're not trying to trigger more headache pain. We're just trying to get more relaxation. The next technique is a stretch for the SCM and scalene muscle. The SCM is this thick, banded muscle that goes from the back of the, of the skull on the mastoid process, just behind the ear, down to our SC joint, which incorporates our collarbone and our sternum. The scalene muscle is this wide spread muscle across the front of our neck that's quite thin. It doesn't do a whole lot of movement, but it associates or helps a little bit with our big movers, which is our SCM. Challenging part is this is one area that is commonly associated with triggering headache pain and hard to stretch. So what I like to do is bring both hands just, just underneath the notch of the collarbone, kind of the notch of the, of the sternum right here. So just come underneath the notch of the sternum. And what you're gonna do is turn slightly away from the side that we're stretching. So I'm gonna turn to the left to stretch the right side out. And then I'm gonna tip my ear back 
to my left shoulder blade. And here you're going to feel that stretch. My hand placement here is just a guide to acknowledge the fact that I'm biasing the right side and I'm right underneath the area where I want to stretch. So as I do that, I'm thinking I'm turning slightly about 45 degrees to the left in order to stretch my right side. And then I'm going to tip my ear back and left as if I'm going to put my ear and my shoulder blade on the left and stretch. And here you're going to hold for 15 to 30 seconds and then come out. Two areas where I see folks do this wrong is they allow their shoulder to shrug. If your shoulder shrugs up, we actually shorten our SCM and our scalene muscles and it gets harder and harder to stretch. So if before we stretch, we push our shoulder blades down as if to try and imagine putting your shoulder blades in your back pockets, push them down and then hand over the notch, rotate away and then tip left ear to left shoulder blade. And from here, you'll feel the stretch. This you have to do standing or sitting up. You can't do this one laying down. You might be able to fabricate it if you have enough pillows under your shoulder blades so you can get the cervical extension or looking up motion that is necessary to stretch those muscles. Uh, so you can do it, but it might take a little bit of effort to get into the right position. So sitting or standing is the best. And then we do the same thing to the other side. So I'm gonna look opposite. Hands are gonna go right underneath this notch of my sternum just under the notch of my sternum, rotate slightly, and then tip right ear to right shoulder blade. And you will notice one side is tighter than the other. If you're still not quite feeling a stretch, then I want you to really think about pushing my shoulder blade down. So in this case, I'm stretching my left side, my left shoulder blade has to push down. And then tip. And you can kind of feel, if you just move your head forward or back, you can feel what angles of that scalene and sternocleidomastoid muscle or SEM muscle are tightest. 15 to 30 seconds. You can do three to 10 breath cycles or, or breath holds. Either one of those counts will work just fine. The goal with both of these techniques is not to increase more headache pain. So consider that. If you're doing a 30 second hold and it's starting to trigger headache pain, pause, come out of it, only do a 15 second hold make an adjustment so we still get what we're looking for, which is relief of tension from the neck muscles and not triggering a headache. I get too many folks who are concerned with doing it exactly the way I say it without investigating what works best for them. If you are known to have chronic headaches, incorporate this three to five times a week into your life. You will find a great deal of relief and long-term relief. The more flexible and limber the front of your neck and back of your head are to help eliminate your headache pain. This technique is imperative for people who find themselves always down reaching forward or looking down for long periods of time causing this rounding of the upper back and flexion of the neck. This technique is called scapular retractions which is just bringing the shoulder blades and squeezing them down and back together. It's not up to our ears but down and back. Bad posture can trigger neck and headache pain. Is your posture a trigger to your neck and headache pain? Let's debunk the idea that there's a good or a bad posture. The myth is that we have a good posture that we need to be in and a bad posture we need to avoid. The reality is any kind of postural position causes overuse type injuries, meaning the best posture is our next posture. So if you find yourself in repeated postures, repeated positions where we have our shoulders rolled forward, our head looking down, the longer we sustain this position, the more common we see neck and headache type problems, shoulder pains, thoracic spine pains, that middle back type pain, and sometimes even low back pain. So the, the best thing to do is to get out of that posture and get some relief on all those muscles that are trying so hard to support you in that position. That can be as simple as standing upright, standing tall, go for a walk, roll your shoulders a few times, any kind of movement that we can ingest some relaxation into all these muscles that are small, fine motor movers in order to help get them relief so that we can avoid any sustained position that develops compensatory pain patterns that ultimately will look like overuse injuries because people will say you were in a bad posture. It's not bad to be in those postures. It's just bad to be in those postures for long periods of time, like it is with any posture you're in for long periods of time. If you find yourself in this position for a long period of time and you're having associated neck and headache pain, here's a simple technique I want you to use every day and possibly every hour. What you're gonna do is stand up big and tall, think about elongating your neck and spine, almost as if you're gonna pop your head into the ceiling tiles, big and tall, and then you're gonna think about 
moving your shoulder blades back and down into your back pockets. You should feel a little bit of a stretch across the front of your chest and then tightness or muscles working across your shoulder blades. This is called scapular retraction and depression. As we push our shoulder blades down and shoulder blades together, we're getting a squeeze across all the muscles that support our thoracic spine and shoulder blades to help combat the fatigue and tiredness that they get in these sustained postures. Often I coach my patients, we wanna lengthen the front and strengthen the back. So we wanna lengthen and open up the front and then strengthen the back side. And often this neck and headache pain is because we have weakness across the muscles around our shoulder blade and in our thoracic spine. So to show you again, we pull our shoulder blades back and down. Head is high and tall, like we're popping our head in the ceiling tiles. And we're gonna hold five to 10 seconds or three to five breath cycles. Good. At the end of that, we relax and then repeat 10 times. So it's a 10 second, 10 repetition hold. Pro tip is set an alarm on your phone to trigger you to do this every hour, or if you wear any kind of wearable technology that prompts you to stand, every time it does that, take that moment as a reminder to get into the scapular retraction exercise so you can combat neck and headache pain and strengthen the muscles of your back and neck. If you're new to our channel, please consider subscribing for more tips like this so you can stay active and independent, live free from painkillers, and avoid surgery.